Wendy, welcome to the Become a Media Maven podcast. Thank you, Christina. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to chat with you about productivity and efficiency because it is my jam. I love it so much. Being organized gives me so much study. Tell me how you got into this because there's so much under the business umbrella, but you really focus in on being productive. How did all of that come about? Yeah, well, you know, it's, um, I started as an industrial engineer. That's my education. So it's all about productivity and process improvement. And that was over 25 years ago. And I've done it ever since in different capacities, this in different ways. But that's my passion is to really bring order and organization into businesses. And what are some, before I guess we get into how to fix the mistakes, what are the most common mistakes that you see people make repeatedly? Well, you know, it's um, it just concentrating on the tasks in front of them without really having like the big picture in mind, because then it really, um, you can't really aim at something so the productivity goes down, right? I mean, you know, you really need to take a look at what you're trying to accomplish and make sure that you're actually using the pieces in place in order to accomplish the big picture as opposed to just handle everything that comes your way. That's and people mistake. are just kind of, yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, it kind of reminds me of when um, I start doing certain things. Like, for example, when I started this podcast, I had a goal and then that goal changed but I kept on doing the same kind of podcast episodes just because I was kind of following the motions and just doing what I thought I should be doing. Is that kind of what you're getting at? The mistake exactly. people are just kind of going along to get along without really thinking deeper? Right. So let's say, for instance, you have, um, let's take the podcast example. That's great. A great one. So let's say you have a certain target market or you want to have a certain um, guest on your podcast, but then you get requests from different people. Can I be on your podcast? Can I be on your podcast? You go, yes, 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 yes. And you say yeah, a lot of yes. Or maybe you don't make the effort to actually reach those that you want, right? So it kind of becomes like you become very busy and you work maybe, you know, a lot of hours, but you're not really, you're not being productive. So that would be a mistake to do that people make when they just accept different actions and they feel like they are busy, but they're not really being productive. That makes sense. And I feel like a lot of people are in this. And this is kind of the definition of work smarter, not harder. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So having a plan is very important. You know, another uh, mistake is or not. I, yeah, I mean, I, we, can, we can call it a mistake or another thing that we, to look for is not really prioritizing what's important. So if you don't prioritize, everything looks the same during the day and then the day ends and then maybe you didn't accomplish some of the tasks, but maybe those were the most important ones. So you should have started with those tasks first. So then let's back up. We know those are mistakes we're making and they're just so easy to make because you kind of get in a habit of making those mistakes. So what are some key tips to increase productivity that actually work? Things that we can start doing today that will actually work. You know, the number one that I always recommend and that's what I do is basically create processes. You have to create a process to what you do. And yes, it might be sound um, to some, it might sound boring. It might sound difficult. Like what am I going to process my life? But the truth is, is that the more processes you have, the more ability you have to create and be creative and um, inject your own personality or your own way of doing things because it takes care of the infrastructure. So it's an example of like, you know, do you want to get from point A to point B use, uh, using some gravel road that is really hard to ride on or to drive on? Or would you like to uh, use an express freeway that is very well paved and you get there very, very fast? So you really have to make the decision what do you want and how you drive, where do you get to is all up to you, but you use the same, it's what process do you use in order to get there? So in order to avoid those mistakes, in order to be more productive, you first of all have to figure out where you want to go and then what are the key components to get from point A to point B. And there can be a lot under that umbrella. So can you give me an example of a process that an entrepreneur who is maybe working from home right now, what is a process that that person should have in place? Sure. So let's talk again about a podcast. So let's say we take an entrepreneur that wants to create a podcast or 
want to post on social media regularly or they um, want to make sure that the marketing is working, the sales process, whatever it is, right? So, but let's, you know, we will start talking about podcasts. So let's start, talk, let's take the podcast process. So let's say you did not, did not have a process on how to create your podcast, then every single time you'll have to create it newly, right? You'll have to figure out what emails you're going to send to your guests. What follow up would you do? Where are you going to upload your podcast? I mean, what are you, go how are you going to edit a video, et cetera, right? But let's look at the other end side of it. If you, when you have a process, then you know exactly how to who to contact, how to contact, how to start a recording, what to do with the recording later, where to take it, etc. So if you have it step by step to get to a final result, and then what changes are the guests, are the way you talk, the, the questions you ask, etc. Even the questions you ask will have a certain process to them, right? But it can still vary from guest to guest because right now we're having a conversation. It's not scripted. So that's where the creativity comes in, but you still have a very clear process. And I can say I, I do have processes for a lot of things. And it makes go by so much faster because you save so much time. Um, for example, with this podcast, you know, I have a process of how I book the interviews, how I conduct them, how I edit them, and then how I release them and promote them. Something else that I do, which I guess this is kind of a process for my software podcast clout, I get a lot of questions. And a lot of the questions are the same ones over and over again. And in my draft folder, I have the answers well thought out and well written to those questions that I can copy and paste them and send them to those prospective customers easily. I'm, I'm not going to retype the same thing over and over again. And after doing that a few times, I said, all right, I'm going to retype this again, and then I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to save it in my drafts folder. And it just makes the customer service end of that so much faster because I have somewhat of a process in place. Absolutely. The same thing with onboarding a new client. You know, you, there are the emails. If you think about how you onboard a new client, there are repetitive things that you do that can take maybe an hour and a half after you already signed up a client. But if you actually reduce it into a process and you use pre, uh, pre-typed templates, right, or you know what to do and you just do it one, after the other, one step after the other, then you save time. And it's all, what, what is productivity all about? It's all about saving time, right? It's all about why do we want to save time so we can do more things, so we can have free time, whatever your motivation is, whatever your goal is, you know, it's all about being more productive so you can do more. And that those are great examples of um, saving time. So speaking of productivity and productivity tools, I'm sure we're going to get into that to that. You know, one great productivity tool that I discovered that actually our mutual friend Jeremy recommended and I start using it, it's text expander. Which is basically does exactly what you're trying to do with what you are doing with saving your text in drafts. What it is, is you have, you create those um, pre-defined or you type, you pre-type responses and then you have a key, a shortcut key. So let's say you're writing an email and you want to insert that pre-typed response. You just click on that shortcut key and then it just fills it up with that text, which is a great, great productivity tool. It saves me so much time. What a genius tool. So what kind of things, so you use that, what kind of shortcuts do you have that you put in your emails? So for instance, uh, like my bio, like I do a lot of speaking engagements. So people usually ask me for my bio and my picture and all that. So I have it as a shortcut as a forward slash bio, and then I can go forward slash bio and boom, it fills out my bio right there. I have it for onboarding a new client because you want to send them a welcome email. Now, I like to personalize it because each client is different. They have different needs and I want to make sure that they see that, you know, it's not a cookie cutter approach because our approach is never cookie cutter. But there are certain things that you want to say, like, you know, here I'm going to send you the scope of work, then you're going to get an invoice. Then after that, we're going to go into the first steps, which are and those I'm going to uh, customize it to the client. But all of the other things, it thinks about how long does it take to actually type it? It takes a long time. If you have already a response like that, you just click on forward slash new client. Boom, you have that response and you can always edit it because it's in the body of the email. 
That is amazing. With my bio, again, another thing that I found typing a lot and starting from scratch every time, I have it in two places. I have a Google Doc with the bio. I have different forms of the bio, you know, one in first person, one in third person, yeah. one as a PR agency owner, one as the founder of Podcast Cloud. So I have a few different versions, but I also have, if you go to mediamavenandmore.com slash bio, I have my bio, I have my talking topics, I have my social media links, and then I have headshots. Like it's all there and it makes it, it doesn't only make it easy for you, it makes it easy for the person on the other end. So I love that. So one big tool we already discussed is that shortcut, love that. And then um, a way to systematize your business, it's you create a process. And if you're thinking, oh, I don't have any processes, look at what you do repeatedly. What do you do a lot? Turn that into a process. What is another key tip? to increase your productivity? Time blocking. I am really, really like time blocking. Do you time block? I love time blocking. It, <laughs> and it, color coding. We can, we can actually share calendars. I mean, I'm probably not going to, but we could. <laughs> yes, yes, a color-coded calendar. Every Everything has a different color depending on, on its subject matter. And I like time blocking because I read once that just the way your brain works when you switch tasks you lose so much time and focus so that's another reason why i like time blocking and you know what to expect you get in that mindset too right because what you know it's true because you do need to have um time to be more for creative things for thinking for when you're writing something you want to have those ideas you want i mean for me i want an uninterrupted time when i'm creating a blog or when i'm writing a proposal or when i'm writing a new article I just want to make sure that I'm in that mood, in that uninterrupted, and I want to block enough time. But then you have also the time to answer emails where you have to go from one to another, right? And then you have the time to meet with clients and you want to also have, you want to be in that zone. You want to be in that, in that, um, basically be in that time and be present. So it's good to block time. That's what I do. Um, another productivity tool that I use is I use I use Asana, but I also with some clients I use Monday.com or any I recommend any software that is basically a task management management software. So what I do is I if I get an email, right? Because that's another that's also links into the productivity of, you know, I don't I want to have a zero inbox, you know, and I do, you know, I achieve the zero inbox at the end of each day. And the way that I do that is I basically look at it, like I allocate specific time, I block times to do my email. And then if it's a task, if it, I read the email and if it is a task that, that I need to do later, or it's something that needs more research or something I have to get back to, I forward it into my task management um, software like Asana. And I just block, I mean, I put it there as my task to do with, and it forwards the entire email with everything and I get it out of my inbox. So that way I attend to that email when I'm actually getting, when I have time to get to it because I schedule it, but I don't leave it in my inbox. I use Monday for podcast clout. My tech team has set me up on Monday and I love Monday. And I want to get back to the email thing. Um, you know, you mentioned time blocking and the, the project task management tool. I feel like email is is a big excuse that people make as to why they can't create processes or why they can't time block or i mean email it can be a time suck if you let it but if you time block when you check your email and when you respond to emails you will see how much time you actually save but i feel like email is very mental i used to be the person who had my notifications on my phone and I would see the number beside my email and I had to check it because I had to see who was emailing me and what they needed if I had to put a fire out and let me tell you a few years ago when I turned that notification off it was literally life-changing I don't get any notifications for social media for email and it is so much better to just go in there a couple of times a day and handle it all at once now I don't do what you do which is moving it over to a task management tool. Instead, I will leave it there as a reminder to address it, but that's probably not a good thing because then I'm letting my email boss me around and my email is telling me what my priorities are instead of me telling it. So speak right. about email because this I know is a big struggle for people. 
It really is. You know, I, I used to do that as well and leave it in my inbox. But then what happens is that you have to every single time that you look at your inbox, you kind of read it again, even if you try not to, even if you spend a second reading it again, like reminding yourself what it is. Right. So that's why I like to forward it and change the task to what exactly do I want to do about that email. So let's say you emailed me and you asked me for my bio, for instance, but in the email, in the subject line, you say, you know, in preparation for the a reminder in preparation for the podcast or whatnot, I will forward it into my Asana and I will write in the task, send the bio to Christina, right? So I will have that. So I know what I'm doing. So whenever I, I skim over my tasks, I know what that means, right? And I will tag it with your name probably or podcast or whatever. I use tags as well on my Asana so I can actually figure out what it is very fast at a glance. But I want to clean my email box inbox. I don't keep it there. It's easier um, because then you can also move it around in terms of priorities. And I like, for instance, in my Asana, I have tasks to do. In, I mean, I have tasks for the day and then I have tasks for the rest of the week and the week after. So for the day, I have morning, afternoon and evening or end of the day, and then I have following day and rest of the week so then I can actually move it to when I am actually going to do it because I have to see how long the task is if it's only a two minute task I will probably do it right away but if it takes longer I want to block it wherever it's actually it's whenever it's applicable so I can actually do it so I, yeah I want to get a better idea of what your asana or your monday or I mean I know yeah. you know there's a variety of tools what it looks like I mean, you mentioned, you know, you have it blocked off morning, afternoon, evening. Do you time block hours? Do you time block days? Like, do you theme your days? So, I mean, I guess you're kind of looking at the email and you're seeing, okay, this is something that I have to get to in the next two days. So I'm going to put it here. And so I guess just give me a better idea of like inside your task management tool. And then does your email connect to it so you can just be in the the task management tool and you can see everything without going back and forth to emails so yes it does well start with the second one so it does connect because um in monday and in asana and in other tools um other project management or task management uh, software you can uh get a link to the email so uh, to the, to the project so what i do is i keep it in my contacts and it's called uh, tasks a D, like my tasks, right? Or if I also, I also have an executive assistant, which is also a great, great way of being more productive. So I will also email him directly. So I have his name, his name is Garrett. So I do task Garrett. So I can email directly, the email can get forward directly into Asana. And when you forward it, when you change the subject, you can write what the task is, right? So let's say for instance, I get an email, I forward it to myself if it's a task for myself. I change the subject line to the name of the task of how it will show up in Asana, and then it's already there. Then it forwards it into my tasks in Asana. And what I what I did in my tasks in the board that is, are, is my task, I actually have it, I created sections, morning, afternoon, and end of the day. And then I have a section for tomorrow, rest of the week, and later or next week, whatever, whatever you want to do. So then you can very easily, once that email gets forwarded, it shows up as a task. You can just move it to the right section. So then you don't forget about things, but you also know where it is. I mean, I look at my calendar and I can see when I have times to do that because I do block time on my calendar to do projects or to do emails or to talk to clients. So then I know already ahead of time where it's going to be. So I organize my day at the end of each day. So today is Tuesday. I will organize Wednesday. So then I will organize the morning, afternoon, and end of the day according to what I have on my calendar and the tasks that I have. So that way I have it organized. I love so. that. I I mean, I everybody in my family knows, everybody I work with knows, if it is not in the calendar, it is not getting done. Like Absolutely. every little thing needs to be in there or it's not happening. And this is actually what helped me. I hate to work out, 
but this is actually what helped me get to my pure bar studio to work out is because it was in the calendar and you have to be committed. Like, I don't care if you're motivated to get this stuff done. I think as business owners, we don't want to do a lot of things that we do, but you have to do some things and you have to be committed to getting them done. And if they're in your calendar and you are committed to following your calendar, then you will get it done. You did also mention another productivity tool that I wanna get into a little bit. Uh, you mentioned you have an assistant. Tell me the kinds of things an assistant can do for you that will keep you more productive. So um, yeah, getting an assistant was the best um, decision. And I wanna to talk to the entrepreneurs, the solopreneurs, the entrepreneurs that are out there, whether you are the CEO of a bigger company or you're by yourself, you need an executive assistant because it basically frees up, frees you up from all the tasks that are really not the best utilization of your time. So for instance, my assistant helps me with um, email. So he does help with emails in terms of going through my emails and um, labeling those that are info, those that are action and those that can basically get out of my um, inbox because they don't, I don't need to see them. Like, let's say if somebody, um, you know, respond to a calendar invite, you know how it shows it on your calendar, on your, on your email, right? I mean, it is important to know because it tells him that that person confirmed because if they didn't confirm, then he will help me confirm appointments, right? So he can, he does that as well. Um, different tasks that I ask him to email people, like when we onboard a new client, so he does all the paperwork, the electronic paperwork, you know, he sends the emails, he sends the invoice, he sends the contract, etc. So um, he helps me with updating the website. He helps with um, different errands that I have to do, like, you know, running to the office to pick up checks, pick up the mail, etc. So he does that. Um, yeah, different, different, all these things that are basically the way we got to his list is I made a list of all the things that I'm doing, but I don't either I don't like doing, I am not as good at doing or are basically not the best utilization of my time, right? I mean, we did a quadrant thing in terms of like me, it's like the best thing for me to do are all the things that I'm good at, that I'm really good at and I like doing, right? And they're contributing to the expansion of the business. And that is again going to time blocking. I only have a certain amount of hours in the day. So those are the tasks that are taking my time. The rest of it, I figure out how to delegate. That's genius. I, not too long ago, this, this podcast interview was like a good reminder for me. I made a list of everything that I did and I separated it into columns just like you did. These are the things I'm good at. These are the things that only I can do, like a podcast interview, for example. And these are the things that I don't like doing or I don't need to do. And when you look at that, you're like, okay, obviously somebody should be doing these things. And a lot of it, sometimes it's all niched under the same umbrella. Sometimes it's not, but you can find somebody to help you with those tasks. So I love that. I want to get into some of the results that you have seen with people when they implement these productivity tools. But before we get to that, I want you to share one more, one more uh, key tip or one more tool that will help people. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the tool that I really like in terms of controlling the email, which is SaneBox. And I use SaneBox and it totally allow me to get to zero inbox. Because what it does, you set up rules that can, uh, it recognize certain emails, like let's say newsletters. Okay, so what happens with newsletters, you think, well, I don't, I'm not subscribed to that, to that many. I didn't think I was subscribed to that many, but I, somehow my newsletter box gets filled with probably 40 to 60 newsletters a day. And I'm not exaggerating. It's like, I don't know how it gets that, but it, what happens is that, you know, you get added to different lists, which is fine. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that, but the newsletters are arriving in your inbox at random times during the day. So like what you were mentioning, if like you see the notification that it says that you have an email, so they, oh, I'm going to go check what that email is. And it's a newsletter that you can probably read later, right? So it puts all the newsletters into one box and then I go through it and I find, I mean, I like to learn from other people. So I don't, I'm not discarding and saying, well, it's not, I don't want to read the newsletters, but it allows me to look at all of them at once and look at the subject line. That's why subjects are so important and see the ones that are actually getting my attention or I want to know more, or maybe it's uh, my favorite company that is sending it. And I'm looking 
looking at it. And I'm not talking about even about consumer, like as a consumer, because I have a different email for that. It's not the shopping online and being a consumer. This is the, only my business email that had all those newsletters. So that's so it automatically puts them there. Then it automatically also recognizes according to where well, it's automatic because you are the one who creates the rules. There is a box for it's called saying later. So those are basically things that um, are not urgent for you to see right now. And I basically the things that are urgent into my inbox are communications from clients, communications with uh, referral partners, and pretty much it or prospects. I mean, those are the three that I will have in my inbox. The rest of them are insane later. So those are things that I can do later. So at the end of the day, I have time to go through it and see what I need to respond to, etc. And those are usual, um, let's say, if I belong to an association or a board of directors, you know, so that those are things that are not like urgent, like in the middle of the day to see, but I can see it at the end of the day. I love that. We mentioned a few tools in this episode. I will link to everything we are talking about in the show notes for this episode. In addition to bizsuccesscg.com, you on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, so people can find out more about you. But before we go, I want to share some, um, I want you to share some examples of the results that you've seen as a result of people implementing these tips and these tools. Okay, good. So I'm just going to share with you um, a story that one of my clients told me. And they have um, a property management company. And they, um, before we st I started working with them, they didn't have any of the processes documented. And we, I work with them on uh, documenting their processes and procedures. And we identified the area where to start. I always like to start with the area that, the question that I like to ask in order to identify the area where to start is, what area of your business or your life or what area of your business, if you had well-documented processes and procedures, you'll get the biggest return on investment. And the biggest return on investment doesn't have to be just in terms of money. It can be time that you gain back. It can be less stress. It can be less hours that you're working, whatever it is for you, that return that you want. And we identified that area and we documented the processes. We did it as a team. I worked with a team of about... 10 people, we got it documented. And then I, um, you know, this is, now we are in 2021. I mean, maybe this podcast will be, you know, for eternity, but it's it's, it's 2021, a year, just a year from COVID when we had the big, you know, the, the lockdown and everything started. And so there was uncertainty of how the business is going to do, but because all these processes were documented, they were able to pivot so easily and actually work from home, which was, huge and they were able to maintain the core team that was actually working efficiently because they knew what they're doing and also although some people had to be let go that knowledge was not lost so that's another thing it's a key thing that you have to retain that knowledge that people do because you mentioned it very true christina that you have um you have processes, whether you know it or whether you, you are aware of it or not. Everybody has a process of doing something. Otherwise, we won't get things accomplished. So if those processes are not documented, then we have a problem. Um, so they documented it. And then they also told me that they start hiring by people that match their culture, not necessarily people that have the experience that they need, because now they can train very easily. So I think this is a great example of the components of all the success um, that creating processes will bring in terms of continuity, knowledge, efficiency, ability to adapt and to work from home or to work from anywhere, and um, also getting people that match your culture and not necessarily just looking for people by experience. I think that is a great example um, because, I mean, we saw firsthand a lot of businesses that were a mess when COVID hit and they either had to shut down, they had to let people work from home. Like you could see how unorganized a lot of businesses and business leaders were. I mean, speaking personally, just seeing my kids go from in-person school to virtual school, I was shocked at how long it took the local school district to figure it out. And then they had all summer and then even in the fall, they didn't know how to do it. Like it was honest to God, it was shocking how many people were unprepared. I am going to link in the show notes to another episode that we did months ago 
about creating SOPs and standard operating procedures, because that okay. is something, I mean, it's a big help. I honestly, I just recently started creating them and this sounds morbid, but my husband is a stay at home dad. And I was like, look, I need to document this and share it with you. Like in case I drop dead, like you need to know what to do. Like you need to like give, give this to somebody to, to run my business, to make money or else like who knows what's going on. So that's, that's so important. You shared so many amazing tips, tricks, and strategies, Adi. Is there anything else you want to add that I should have asked or, or we should have discussed? Yeah, I can't, I, I can't think of anything else, but I'm, I'm really happy that you mentioned SOPs because that's so important. And again, it's the, it's the misconception that if you have SOPs or procedures or processes, you're not going to be able to be creative or you're not going to be able to to communicate or um, you know, you want you lose you. Right. But, you know, you're a great example of that in terms of like you're very creative. You know, you are you help people and but you like your processes because it, you see the importance of it. Yeah, exactly. And I just like being sane and things being organized and everything having its place. Like if it's not like that, I get so much anxiety. My daughter calls it org anxiety. When things aren't organized, I get anxious. <laughs> so yeah, I get, or my term. I get org anxiety. Um, these are amazing productivity hacks. Thank you so much, Adi. Again, everything will be linked in the show notes. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me.